Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's Record Review, the only always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after coming back from the zoo. Good quarantine destination. Today I'm going to be reviewing an album by Proto Martyr. Pro Proto Martyr. Okay, it's a great band, but their name does not roll off the tongue. It's like Proto and Martyr, like, you know, Jesus Christ was a martyr or whatever. Proto Martyr. The name of the album is called Ultimate Success Today. <clears throat> And usually what I do is I give a brief overview, I give some kind of framing device, and, uh, and then I go song by song. But what I want to do now, and I do this sometimes, is I'm just going to focus in on one song. I'm gonna spend a lot of time and use that song as an example of what makes this an excellent album. I've listened to this album now about three times. I've listened to it with my family, I've listened to it by myself, and each time it gets richer. It is one of these albums where it's very guitar, there's lots of guitar, drums, bass. It sounds very noisy, and often noisy music is deceptively complicated. I think that's the case with this album. I'm going to be focusing on the track Processed by the Boys, which if you haven't heard it, I really recommend you, you listen to it, or even better, look up the video on YouTube. If you have seen the video, you will understand why there's a giant bowl of bananas next to my head. Basically, the video is like this. The video is like a cheesy local access thing with, uh, with someone singing, and uh, it's clearly not the singer of the band, and there's this whole scene of this puppet trying to get bananas out of a bowl, and the person who's holding the bowl getting mad at the puppet. And I, I was watching this and listening to it, and, and my son got really into it too, and we ended up watching it a few times. And what I want to do is I'm just gonna play you a little bit of the video. I'm gonna actually, <laughs> this is my editing skills, I'm actually gonna play you the video on my computer here. So you're not gonna get a good idea of what it really looks like. But just listen to the music, listen to the sound. The strength that I love here is every song, basically every song, I believe, had to have been started with a drum line. Just a very strong, loud drum line, good, sharp guitars, very charismatic vocals. We're gonna watch the video a little bit, listen to the music a little bit, and then I wanna talk more about what makes this music good and what actually is this music. So what I hope you heard there is a lot of things that make this music great. The great drums, ba -da 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 -da, an awesome guitar going in. Actually at times it reminded me a little bit of the opening track off the Eve Toomer album, or even like James Bond, almost like an orchestra hit. -na 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 -na. And while I was listening to this, um, my son was playing Animal Crossing, as he is actually doing at this exact moment. Is that right? Mm -hmm. so, well, what are you doing right now in, in the game? Okay. He's mostly collecting uh, pears at this point. So uh, we, you know, we were listening to the music, and, and he's like, Dad, what is this? I'm like, oh, this is Proto Martyr. It's like, I know, it's cool. I like the video, and I like the ba -da, da 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 But what genre is it? Oh, my favorite question. What genre is it? And if you look it up, it's defined as post-punk. So I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about this music, why it is post-punk, and then even more importantly, why post-punk is bunk. Post-punk is a bunk category of music, I think. If we go to Wikipedia, which as I often say is the best source for musical genre explanation because it is so well curated by people who actually care. Post-punk is defined as a broad genre of rock music which emerged in the late 1970s as artists departed from the raw simplicity and traditionalism of punk rock, instead adopting a variety of avant-garde sensibilities and non-rock influences. This whole concept of a variety of avant-garde sensibilities is why the classification doesn't quite work. It reminds me in art history of, uh, I'm a French professor, but I also studied art history when I was younger, uh, post-impressionism. So, you know, impressionism has a whole set of things that make things impressionist. And it's not hard to define what makes Pissarro or what makes Monet an impressionist, right? The way they paint light, the brush strokes, there's certain traits that make something impressionist. When we got to post-impressionists, we were sort of ushered into the modern age, really, because post-impressionism means nothing. Artists like Seurat are considered post-impressionist, who took the things that impressionists did, like, you know, being able to see the brush strokes, and made it, like, weirdly minute and, like, like 
like sculptural. Like he made little tiny dots of paint feel more solid than invisible paintbrushes, right? Invisible uh, strokes. But that's the same genre, according to art history, as Van Gogh, where you see his paintbrush and bright colors and nothing looks real or uh, all these different genre, Van Gogh, I don't want to pronounce it uh, pretentiously, all these different things that are as different as possible are all just put into this blanket. And in the same way, you can take Joy Division and Talking Heads and say, oh yeah, it's the same post-punk. So I don't like this term very much because it doesn't do much for us except for saying a few things. It's going to be most likely guitar-led, it's going to have a singer that you can hear very distinctly, and it's going to have some loud elements that are unsettling. I think that's the connection to punk, just some kind of willfully unsettling music. And that's what this is. But actually, what it reminds me most of is not post-punk, but bands that were pre-punk, or, if you excuse the pun, proto-punk. More like the Stooges. Maybe that's because they're all from Detroit. I don't know, but I think that, though. Like, the, a really strong vocalist, and music that is guitar-led and heavy distortion, but still very melodic. Um, or, or even at times like Krautrock, like Can, you know, where it's just very loud noises, very atmospheric, again, with the drummer being just the, the leader of the band, at least that's how it feels to me, just how steady and rhythmic it is all the way through. If it's at all like post-punk, I would say it's in the singer's voice and his attitude. It reminds me a lot of Nick Cave and the Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds era. Uh, reminds me of uh, David Thompson of Perry Ubu. I think it's David Thompson, or is it David Thomas? Or is that the guy who owns Wendy's? If you know the lead singer of Pere Ubu, a real sign I'm not a real music critic, <laughs> put it in the comments. But the same kind of feeling of like, or even David Johansson from the New York Dolls, speaking of, of pre-punk, just a very charismatic like singer who's sort of singing, sort of yelling, sort of talking, very poetic and, a, and able to break things down. And we see that all in this one song. So again, I urge you very strongly, listen to the track Processed by the Boys. Now, the nice thing about this video is that it's subtitled. I don't know if that's to make it look more like a cable access show. I don't know what. But when you pay attention to the lyrics, the lyrics are very consistent. They're consistently good on this album, and this song represents why they're good. This song... Now, just hold up a second. If I tell you the title, Processed by the Boys, that means nothing. This song is about the probable banality of the apocalypse. What? <laughs> if the apocalypse comes, or when the apocalypse comes, because obviously it has to come eventually, uh, that's depressing, uh, when it comes, is it going to be fantastic? You know, is it going to be, like it says in here, like a wild animal charging at you? Is it going to be a giant beast turning mountains into black holes. But then the song tells you when the song breaks. And their, their song construction is usually quite simple. You have maybe an A part, a B part, maybe a pre-chorus. But here there's like a very distinct break where there's a sound and the singer sings the thesis of the song. Fiction! Just keeps on shouting fiction. That we might want to imagine the end of the world as being fascinating. But as he says in one of his best lyrics on the album, reality has a far duller edge. That's what he's telling us. And in general, the album treats these themes of sort of being and nothingness. I brought my copy of Sartre with me as I always do whenever I talk about existential bands. In general, it's a very existential album talking about the absurdity of existence and in particular, the sort of the way that capitalist society, or our consumer society, is constantly pushing against the recognition of the futility of life, the absurdity of existence, by being overly positive. That's why I think the title of the album uh, is what it is, you know, Ultimate Success Today, or yes, Ultimate Success Today. Like, these are the kinds of messages that we're getting, whereas in reality, we are all just people holding on to bowls of bananas, trying to keep puppets from taking them away, right? So. A lot of existential dread, a lot of futility, and I would say that, in a way, these lyrics are very similar to Radiohead lyrics in that way, in which 
the silliness of existence and of slogans and advertising and just the constant back and forth with that, uh, the constant like back and forth between recognizing absurdity and being told uh, sort of oddly positive, yay, yay, go bye, bye, bye sentiments. It's very similar in both cases. Although I would argue that the proto-martyr writes better lyrics than, than Radiohead because they don't rely on cliche as much. Although at times, like, like Radiohead, their lyrics are sometimes a little too smart. I don't know, like talking about Hermes. And, uh, I don't know, sometimes it feels a little bit too smart. Uh, it could be a little bit simpler. So that's my quick review. I am gonna go song by song, but if you just want a, my general take on the album, that's why it's so great, is these very intelligent themes, excellent guitar work, amazing drumming, uh, this voice, kind of moaning, kind of singing, kind of whining, talking about very interesting existential themes in a way that is ironic and detached, but also heartfelt, uh, which is really quite nice. Um, so I'm not gonna go track by track all the way through. If you leave now, that's okay. I'm not gonna do anything special for the rest of the video. I'm just gonna talk about the rest of the tracks and why they're good. Um, the opening track is called Days Without End. Um, and this is a good example of the way they build with stress, just lots of stress in this album. It's a very kind of nerve-wracking album. The drummer's riding a hi-hat basically the whole time. This is when the singer's at his most kind of charismatic, gothy singing. When I say gothy, I mean like Nick Cave or like M. Jira from The Swans. Jira? How do you pronounce his name? Anyways, the dude from The Swans, um, just sort of singing and not singing at the same time. And there's kind of like a wall of sound, but it's very unpleasant. And there's horns quite often in this album, and in this song is when they're used the best, in the background. And it sounds like they're being played almost incidentally, like maybe even recorded from someone who's not playing along with this song. Next track is I Am You Now, uh, very much in their style of what is the nature of existence, how do I exist, what am I. This song almost has a funk bass line, which is odd, but anything funky is kind of covered by a loud atmospheric noise. One thing that they tend to do very well is they'll have a guitar line that serves as like a very clean line in the middle of their song, like a clean melody that is not echoed by the singer that comes on and plays usually a fairly long, like four or five bar melody, uh, or probably eight bar melody, that is just a, a nice kind of respite from the noise. And, the and then there'll just be a nice guitar line going through, um, which is one of, helps to provide like I said, like a break. Like when I was walking around the zoo, you know, they have those little misters just to like calm you down, just to cool you down because it's so unbelievably hot. It's a little bit like that, you know, like you, you need a little break. So just having a little melodic guitar line playing something that you can just sort of hold on to and listen and go, ah, that's nice. Then you can go back into the existential dread of the rest of the album. Uh, next track is called The Aphorist. Aphorist? I don't know how do you pronounce that word either. I'm having trouble today. I think it's a, the aphorist, because it's an aphorism. An aphorism is, like, uh, I looked up the definition for you, a terse formulation of truth. So someone telling someone, you know, someone saying something true, but in kind of a severe way. Uh, this is cool because it has kind of a shuffling beat, uh, as opposed to straightforward. It's almost like a little shuffle, and a beautiful example of that kind of guitar line. If I weren't so afraid of the copyright goblins taking this video down, I would play you this guitar line because this is the best example of this kind of long extended melody, the mister in the zoo. Uh, oh, by the way, I was at the zoo and there was a snow leopard and uh, it like jumped at me like it was trying to kill me. And it was one of the craziest things because I was just sitting there like looking at it and like the eyes and the claws, I backed up. I almost knocked over my son. <laughs> Like, take the boy. Uh, it, it was really wild. Anyways, it's a good thing to go to the zoo. Uh, and then we come to the track June 21st, which is about summer, it seems. It seems it's about summer in the city. It starts with really cool discordant chords. And then out of nowhere, a female singer makes an appearance. Is she a member of the band? I don't know. I don't know anything about this band. I'm a French professor, not a music critic. But it's very nice. Again, another nice respite because the singer's good, very good but you get a little bit tired of the uh, sad things, crazy things, I am alive, I am dead, we are all dead. Having a different voice coming in is nice. Um, the female voice comes in and then he joins her and it's kind of a nice back and forth. This is cool too because it does something that, I guess this must be a proto, a, a post-punk, 
a thing you can say is post-punk. So if post-punk is defined as like being more avant-garde, less traditional than punk, things like a section of this song is just a loud guitar, a very clanging guitar, clang, like it might even be open chords, I don't know. Um, but maybe that's an example of the, the discord of punk matched with a more avant-garde sensibility of, of making some sound that you don't expect. Uh, the next track is Michigan Hammers. Uh, this one's okay. I think it's the weakest track. I mean, it's sort of trying to sound like a hammer at times. So it has kind of a hammering feel. Isn't that interesting? The voice is really far in the back. Um, this is definitely a point where the first listen, I'm like, oh my God. Every single song, the drummer is doing something interesting. Here, he or she is going nutty on the ride cymbal. Just like, just over and over and over again. And really playing some interesting things. Uh, this is where it sounds the most like Peri Ubu to me, as far as great punk slash pre-punk slash post-punk bands. Uh, then there's a track called Tranquilizer, which is paired, I think, with the next track. Um, it starts off with a cricket sound, kind of a tambourine thing. And then this is cool because it has a, a strong lead that's just a bass line or a guitar line playing a bass that goes all the way through. And then here, uh, and for most of the album, the singer is sort of doing his, his own thing, sort of going over the rhythms and, and, and just being a very piercing voice that isn't always completely in line with the song underneath. But in this one, it's very staccato and goes along with the rhythm of the music. It's all about the pain, the pain, the pain of existence. Um, the vocals just match the rhythms quite well. Uh, and the chorus is just like these, just wailing, just wailing horns and wailing guitars. So that it's cool, the, the counterpoint between the two of like, the pain, and then the chorus is just wailing, howling pain. Uh, and then the horns stick around for the second verse, like incidentally in the back. It's nice. Lots of good dynamics. I would say in general on the album, there's good dynamics. I could use a little bit more quiet with all the loud, but still, it's good. Uh, next track, uh, Modern Business Hymn. Uh, again, in that real Radiohead <laughs> area. Uh, a, lot, a lot more guitar led here. The drums are kind of in the back. But then the lyrics here seem to, tr to tie back to the previous song. Once the trank hit, had hit. So it seems to be about tranquilizers and the relationship between maybe us living in society and being tranquilized and business, I'm not quite sure. Then the crickets come back from tranquilizers that make these songs feel very connected. And a lot of these themes, a lot of these great uh, you know, existentialist themes, um, the past is full of dead men, the future is a cruelty, resign yourself. Not for nothing. But uh, a comedy came out yesterday called Palm Springs by the Lonely Island guys. And uh, it's basically like a uh, Groundhog Day style thing. But it's interesting because uh, it's got multiple characters in a Groundhog Day situation. And that actually ends up becoming a treatise on existentialism. So it's worth watching that movie and listening to this album at the same time, like I did basically, like the same day, because there, it's really this, this interesting idea, you know? If the future is a cruelty, is the thing to do to resign yourself, right? Faced with the absurdity of existence, either a repeating existence in the movie, uh, or just the nature of existence now, like poor proto-martyr is facing, uh, should you just resign yourself? And then the song ends with the title of the album, Have You Heard Them Say Ultimate Success Today? I imagine that they just read that somewhere, you know, like just, just read that out of context and just said, Ultimate Success Today. When I had a band 25 years ago, I wanted to name our first album, 1968, Victory Number no. One, because I had a baseball card and it said that. <laughs> and it was the same kind of feeling of like, just weird statements of victory and success seem out of place at times. Uh, next track, Bridge and Crown. It's pretty nice. It's a waltz. Um, kind of up and down, nicely, slightly detuned guitars. Just a little bit unpleasant guitars. Really cool low horns in the back. Almost like a sweetness to the melody here. And the way he sings it is quite nice. Um, the lyrics here, again, are straight on brand with the existential dread of late days of capitalism. Uh, there's only four types of patience here, he tells us. Exacting, philosophical, indifferent, or hysterical. And I would say, going back to that Palm Springs analogy, that's sort of the, the four different ways of reacting to being in the prison of existence. And then it ends with the track Worm in Heaven. 
great title. Uh, kind of a droney guitar, almost a ballad. I would say the drummer is the, doing the least here. Uh, I am the worm in heaven, so close to grace, could lick it off the boot heels of the blessed. And then it ends with the greatest existential howl you can have. I exist, or I did. I was here, or never, never, never was. And it ends with loud, clangy guitar, and like a jam, like a strong feeling, and you're pumped up. And the whole album, you're pumped up. You're happy to be listening to it. It's very engaging. It's very smart. It rocks. Like, it's a very hard-rocking album. And I actually included a link to this on my Facebook page. Because I have so many friends who are like, Music is dead. It's all just 21 Pilots garbage and junk. Um, I like 21 Pilots. But this is evidence that whatever, like, people who think, you know, rock and roll is gone, man. Uh, it's not. It's lots of interesting stuff is happening, and some of it is happening in Detroit. Okay, well then, for a bowl of bananas and for the snow leopard that wanted to kill me, there's the camera.